this is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck has said the states of emergency are needed to send a signal to criminals that they are under constant watch. Speaking on RJR Wednesday, Mr. Chuck said other measures available to the police do not provide this element of crime fighting. He argued that typical cordon and search operations cannot be used on a continuous basis without a state of emergency and so cannot be as effective in containing criminals. Mr. Chuck added that having soldiers in the communities under the states of emergency on a long-term basis is more likely to gain the confidence of residents than if the police were there alone. Mr. Chuck's comments come against the background of the parliamentary opposition's insistence that extending the states of emergency beyond January would be unconstitutional. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has written to opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips seeking to arrange a meeting to discuss ways in which the measure can be continued. The young affiliate arm of the Jamaica Labour Party, Generation 2000, G2K, says public defender Arlene Harrison Henry should immediately address claims by children's advocate Diane Gordon Harrison and the police that her report on the state of public emergency is grossly inaccurate. The public defender recently appeared before the sitting of the Internal and External Affairs Committee of Parliament, where she made claims about the detainees being held in cages under deplorable conditions and that they were fed a poor diet. G2K said these claims were strongly refuted by acting commander of the St. James SOE, Senior Superintendent of Police, Anthony Morris, who stated that detainees ate from the same pot as police on a daily basis. The group said that it has shockingly noted reports in the media that the public defender also claimed that 105 children were detained under the SOE as at October 31, 2018. This claim, it said, has also been contradicted by the children's advocate, who says less than a quarter of that number were minors. The group said that Senior Superintendent Morris corroborated this and it says the number of minors detained were 13 at, as at October 31. Jamaica is receiving international expertise in undertaking the security audit of the tourism sector. Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett announced in October that he had directed the Tourism Product Development Company to conduct the audit through its Destination Assurance Division. The objective, he said, was to identify gaps and ensure that the destination remains safe, secure and seamless for visitors and locals alike. Minister Bartlett said that the government is determined to preserve, quote, the wonderful destination that we have and ensure that all our visitors feel confident and protected while in Jamaica, end quote. There has been mutually beneficial cooperation in the economy and trade, investment and infrastructure since the establishment of the diplomatic ties between China and Jamaica. In recent years, there has also been cooperation in the area of human resource development. We have more in this report. China's Human Resource Development and Cooperation Program is under the framework of China's foreign aid sponsored by its Ministry of Commerce. This year sees more than 300 Jamaican participants in some 46 seminars and six scholarships. Since its inception over 13 years ago, it has been a win-win for both countries, with over 3,000 Jamaicans benefiting from a range of training programs in the areas of management, agriculture, energy, tourism, healthcare, environmental protection, and security. This kind of cooperation that benefits the two countries, and as the developing countries, both China and Jamaica, has a common development goals. Best was as for the sustainable development of the future. The Chinese government assumes expenses for all participants of round-trip international air tickets, accommodation, and traffic costs during training in China. The Human Resource Development Program between China and Jamaica is seen as not only critical for economic development, but also for political, 
technological and socio-cultural and environmental development. Chinese President Xi Jinping recently stated that China's door to the world will never close but open wider. Through this open door, Jamaica looks forward to continued cooperation that will yield win-win results for the benefit of both our peoples. The Human Resource Development Corporation will be the key element in this effort. The Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, the KSAMC, will host its annual Christmas tree lighting ceremony today. The function is slated for St. William Grant Park in downtown Kingston beginning at 6.30 p.m. Guests are being asked to be seated by 5.45 p.m. During the ceremony, Kingston's Mayor, Senator, Councillor Delroy Williams will present keys to the city to the Tivoli Dance Troupe, Stella Maris Dance Ensemble and the National Dance Theatre Company. The proceedings will commence with a civic ceremony to be followed by a concert featuring various cultural and gospel artists including Jermaine Edwards and Wayne Marshall as well as budding talents from communities neighbouring the park. The ceremony and concert are free to the public. Buja Banton's Long Walk to Freedom Tour will reportedly kick off in Kingston at the National Stadium on Saturday, March 16 next year. The concert will mark Buja's first performance in his homeland before any other performances on his tour. It is also reported that part proceeds from March 16 show will go towards the entertainer's recently formed Buja Banton Foundation, which will focus on assisting at-risk youths on the island. Tickets will go on sale January 16 via Buja's official website. The US dollar on Wednesday ended trading at Jamaican $128.69, down by 20 cents. According to the Bank of Jamaica's daily foreign exchange trading summary, the Canadian dollar ended trading at $97.10, up from $96.29, while the British pound sterling ended trading at $164.02, up from $161.34. And motorists should see a decrease at the pumps in the price of gasoline and diesel effective today. That's according to the latest ex-refinery costs from Petrojam. 87 and 90 octane gasoline will be sold for $122.08 and $124.92 and per litre respectively, down by $2.32 each. Automotive diesel fuel will be sold for $128.72 per litre, following a decrease of $1.99, while ultra-low sulfur diesel is down by $1.81 and will be sold for $133.80 per litre. Meanwhile, kerosene decreased in price by $1.76 and will be sold for $109.03 per litre. Do remember, marketing companies and retailers will add their respective markup to these prices. In regional news, U.S. Major League Baseball, MLB, and Cuba's Baseball Federation have reached a deal to let Cuban players sign with U.S. teams despite diplomatic tensions. Eligible Cuban players can now join MLB teams without defecting from the communist-run nation in a deal similar to those with Asian leagues. The MLB has also agreed to pay Cuba's federation a percentage of signing bonuses that Cuban players receive. Officials say they hope the deal will end player trafficking from Cuba. According to the BBC, under the new agreement, Cuban baseball players over the age 25 who have played in Cuba leagues for six years are free to leave and sign with MLB teams. In sports, the Red Stripe Premier League was thrown into a tailspin this week after protesting referees did not turn up for three of four scheduled matches. General Secretary of the Jamaica Football Federation, Dalton Wint, said that the root of the problem is the non-payment of some allowances to the referees, adding that the Federation was working to resolve the issue ahead of the scheduled matches for this weekend. According to the Jamaica Gleaner, no officials turned up for the Tivoli Gardens versus Arnett Gardens at the Edward Siaga Complex. 
Dumb Holden versus Mount Pleasant at Royal Lakes Complex, and Humble Lion against Waterhouse at the Effortville Community Center. Wendt said that the JFF did not know that the officials were going to withdraw their services. Newly appointed president of the Jamaica Football Referees Association, Malicia Reed said they had tried to communicate the concerns to the Premier League Clubs Association, but their voices fell on deaf ears. And that's the news on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom. Happy holidays.